So, there is a guy called David Eagleman, and he is a neuroscientist, and he wrote this book called Some, and it has um, 40 different versions of the afterlife. Um, and there's one, um, like, excerpt from it called Metamorphosis, and I just kind of want to explain a little bit about what it says, kind of in my own words. And so, there's, they say that there are three deaths that you experience. The first one is when the body loses its function, um, and then the second one's when the body's buried or whatever happens to it, and then the third death is when the name, when the name of the person who died is spoken for the very last time. So in this section the author describes this room where people wait after they've died, and you sit there and you stay there until your name um, has been said for the very last time. And so they call the name out and some people you know, hunch over and go and they're really sad because, you know, you're thinking like, well, my name is, you know, lost, I've been forgotten, no one's ever going to say it again. And then some people are like begging to leave because they've been there for so long. And they speak about this example where there's this farmer who um, drowned in a river 200 years ago and um, where he died and his farm is now the site of a small college and so the tour guides every single week tell the story of his death um, so he's stuck in this room even though people aren't remembering him for him they're remembering him for his death um, but they keep telling his story over and over again and he's stuck and the details of the story start to fade away and his name is alienated from him and it's no longer connected to him, it's just a name, and it's not um, really about who he is, but he's still stuck in this room. So the author continues and says that we live in the heads of those who remember us. Um, we lose controls, uh, control of our life and become what they want us to be. So we make models of people in our heads, like saying, what would my friend do here, or what would my mother say? Um, and we start running these thoughts and these models through our heads and we kind of set people to, up to be like algorithms and we have these concepts in our mind and when people die then they start to fade away and drift over time um, because we just keep playing, replaying these scenarios in our heads instead of really focusing on who the person is and understanding that they change as time goes on and it's not just this model that we have in our head. I think a hard thing to wrap your head around and to continue to um, utilize in your life um, is the idea that we really can't completely focus on the past. Um, yes, what a person has done in the past um, affects how you view them, but you can't have that control the projection that you put onto them. Um, in our film class, we often talk about how um, we're loving the idea of someone. We're loving what we have placed on them, saying, like, this is who I think you are, um, who you were when we met, maybe, but years later, you know, they change. So we start to lose the true concept of what a per of who a person is. Um, and just place this algorithm on them instead of it being who they really are. We focus so much on their past and their past mistakes that it's so hard for a lot of people to move past that. Um, a lot of people just start focusing on that maybe to make themselves feel better, maybe um, because it's all they really have um, instead of realizing that some people can change and realizing that some people um, maybe even want to change, and it's a, really hard for a lot of people to aid others to um, become um, better or better versions of themselves if that's what they want to do. And I think a lot of people um, kind of want to stay secure and want people to um, remain how they are.